I'm coming to you today as a direct response to uh, an idea that Bella had, my lovely sweet friend from across the pond. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know sweet Bella from England. And she had asked me if I would do a collab with her and talk about aging. It's certainly something I'm qualified to do and it's something that I've given a great deal of thought to lately, not willfully, but because of what's been going on in my world. Aging, I think, depends so much on what's happening in our lives at the moment. Let me explain. When I used to think about aging, as recently as a year ago, I used to think how incredibly lucky I was that I was aging so well that I didn't have the typical problems that so many of my friends and acquaintances talked about. I didn't have all those aches and pains. I could take the stairs almost running up and down, which was certainly useful since my career is in real estate and staging. And I gave little thought to aging per se, other than as a concept. And I've seen through other people's eyes. Well, I've had an awful lot of time to think about it and to focus on what's important and some of the things that we probably should need to prepare ourselves for just in case. I never had much of, uh, I didn't deal with a lot of medical issues. I had some, but I didn't deal with a lot of them. And essentially things would happen to me every 11 years. And I frankly started to get a little bit nervous last year, thinking I was coming up on the 11th year. And I thought how odd it was it had been going on for a very long time. And sure enough, on the 11th year, I got hit hard. I, if most of you know my journey. It started out with what I perceived to be a tiny little lump in my groin. And I'd had a few issues before that when I was standing talking to a client a few times. I had an ache in my hip in the back. Friends said to me, oh, that's sciatica. Don't worry about it. It's a natural part of the aging process. Never gave a second thought to any of it. And I got my comeuppance. I went to a doctor. He told me, don't worry about it when I showed him that tiny little lump. And he said, it's a lipoma. It's nothing to worry about. He said, it's very common. He said, unfortunately, yours is in a bad spot. That's why it's bothering you. Fast forward, I went back to him twice more over a period of six months to have him repeat the same thing to me. Nothing to worry about, it's a lipoma. Ultimately, when I had my MRI done in February of 2018, it, in the report, it mentioned, I don't remember if it said suggestive of or something to do with a sarcoma. I didn't have any real understanding about sarcoma other than my memory of uh, Ted Kennedy's son, I thought, had a sarcoma when he was young, and I seem to remember that. But I knew sarcoma was not a good word. Well, it, it totally changed my world. It made me go from somebody who was aging gracefully, or so I thought, yes, I was putting on too much weight, no, I wasn't eating the way I should have. I could have done more exercise. I, there were things that I should have changed, but I didn't. But I was not afraid. I was not feeling as if I was vulnerable in any way. I was lucky. I was one of the lucky ones until I wasn't. And that's, that's one of the things that I want to talk about. We never know what tomorrow is going to bring. I went from being a totally independent woman on my own for a long time and perfectly fine with it, having a very fulfilling career most of the time, 
and loving what I did, enjoying the time that I had with friends, and enjoying the time that I had alone. And I went from that into a totally dependent, totally fearful person who had panic attacks, who was afraid to be alone 10 minutes because God knows what could happen. I couldn't handle it. And that that's one of the things that I think about with aging. Things come up. Things come up that may be difficult for us to handle. Sometimes it's a move. Sometimes it's leaving familiar places where we have spent many years and developed many relationships. And sometimes those relationships go by way of, I guess, attrition in a way, because people move away, people pass away, people come into and then out of our lives all the time and we deal with it. But as we get older, you can get very lonely, you can feel fearful. If you don't have a really good financial plan in place, you can be worried about money as I am. I mean, I lived a comfortable life with, you know, I, I didn't, I did nothing dramatic, but I had my nice car. I was in my comfortable house. I could pretty much buy what I wanted to buy within reason. Never was one to take vacations or do things like that. I come from a workaholic family and I fell right into the fold with that. I mean, I, I was a perfect example of that. Even when people are around sometimes as we get older, and I hear this from people who do have people in their lives, there is still a loneliness that permeates our beings based upon the fact that we feel separate or we feel different or we feel less than, and that's a hard pill to swallow. So aging has so many components. I think one of the big things about aging, as I think about it as a, a nebulous kind of thing, is that it represents change in many ways. And some people love change, they relish change in their lives, they see it as adventurous, and other people, like moi, are very resistant to change. And you change something and you threaten their very being. So there is a lot of that to deal with. We, we spend a lot of time, those of us who are inclined to worry, we spend a lot of time thinking about the what ifs. What if there is suddenly no money? What if I'm suddenly left alone? What if nobody is there to help? What if, what if, what if? In the process of living in the what if world, we miss the here and now. And I want every moment of the here and now that I can get for the rest of my life. One of the things I've learned is make the most of what you have. Make the most of what you can do in this moment in time until you can get to the next place. I have always believed, and I do to this day, that sometimes on this earth, we have our feet firmly planted on the wrong road. And I truly believe that our angels and that the plan that God has for us, if we would only get out of our own way to fulfill our own destinies. I think when we are planted on that wrong road, sometimes something happens. It can even be something catastrophic that will then take us back to that right road or force us to go down a different road. Aging. Sometimes, and I think this is really hard very often for people who were extraordinarily 
beautiful or extraordinarily handsome or extraordinarily successful in their earlier lives, sometimes aging makes you question who you really are because you identify with what you have done, what you have accomplished, what you look like. And as you see the looks fade, you suddenly feel that you no longer can be in control because you no longer can hold court. You no longer are the person that everybody said, oh my God, I want to look like her or I want to be like him. It's another part of the aging process that can be really, really daunting to some people. In the end, we are not what we earned. Our sex, our success is not determined by how many dollars we have made or how many dollars we have socked away or how many dollars we have frittered away. Our success, I believe, has much more to do with people and the relationships that we build along the way because in the end, you can't take it with you. What you can take with you is all the goodwill you've engendered, all of the love that you have acquired and given through a lifetime, and that's what it's about. For some of us, we have pets that we adore, and if we lose a pet and we are older, we feel bereft beyond belief. We always do when we have pets that we love, but especially if we're alone and if we think, oh my God, I can't make this on my own. So aging has a lot of stress points. And I think what each of us has to do is to find a way, a means of dealing with it and getting through the day. Sometimes it's as simple as getting through the next hour or two or three don't think about it this minute. Deal with what is. You cannot go back. You cannot go back. How many times in my life I've, I've said to myself, if only, if only I could go back to this one moment in time, just for a minute, just to change what I did, and that would have changed forever after for me, but you can't. It is just not part of the plan. We accomplish what we accomplish. We make missteps where we make them. We learn from them, hopefully. And if we don't, guess what? We get to repeat them over and over again. And I have to tell you, some of the best lessons I've learned in my lifetime have come from the most horrific circumstances. And after each one, I have always said, the lesson that I learned was worth it but I never want to experience that pain again, never. So I will say the same thing now. I pray that wherever I'm headed on this road we call life, that it's a better place with more understanding. And I really, truly hope that I can help other people as they start to go through this in whatever way they go through it. And I know a lot of my viewers have said to me that I've helped them enormously as they've gone through things. They tell me that I'm brave. They tell me that I'm strong. They tell me that I am whatever they think I am. And the truth is, for me, truth is for me, I often feel like such a weakling, like I just am not doing it right. Like I need, I need to do it better. I need to be better at it. And I am still growing. I'm growing older to be sure, just as every one of you is. And every baby from the, from the time it's born, we are aging and we are headed toward that road that takes us to some other place. But for every day that we are on this earth, we should try to be the best person, the best example of us that we can possibly be. It's all we can be in the end. So aging is just part of that. 
I wish aging were easier. I often think of my girlfriend who said, you know, um, the golden years are not for sissies, and she was so right. I didn't understand it at the time because I was 18 years younger than she was and I wasn't feeling it. And until you feel it, experience it, or see somebody that you love experience it, you can get it on some global esoteric level. But can you really get it? Can you really get it on a deep gut level? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I hope for as many of you who have not faced these horrible crises that you don't. I hope you never do. I hope you glide through whatever is left of your life in the best possible way. I hope the same for me. I hope it for Bella. I hope it for Sheila. I hope it for every one of you who comes here religiously and watches me and shares my journey with me because you are more special to me than you can possibly know. So on that note, I'm going to end this. And there is so much more that all of us could talk about, about aging. Take care, my friends. I love you all.